Thank you for checking out this video on WASD-FM. My name is Luke the Kook. Today I'm doing a much more casual format with less editing because, by God, I need to spend less time behind the computer. Halloween isn't over. Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! Exactly! Don't turn it off! Stay tuned right here because I want to talk about some of the spooky stuff that I grew up on and what turned me into the kook I am today. Just a few things that I want to talk about, starting with my earliest memory out of these. Actually, my earliest memory is tied between two movies, but I want to talk about this one first because I rewatched it most recently. You've heard of the talking heads. You've heard of the screaming skull. But today, I introduce you to the screaming heads. In 1992, a made-for-TV movie titled Grave Secrets Legacy of Hilltop Drive premiered. Actually, Grave Secrets might have been a series, I'm not too sure about that, and I didn't research too deeply into it because I really only just wanted to talk about this one in particular anyway. It's a film that's very similar to The Poltergeist, except you know how Poltergeist gets all Hollywood big budget by the end? Yeah, Legacy of Hilltop Drive doesn't do that. It stays pretty grounded, which makes it a lot more believable. Like Poltergeist, a family moves into a house that was built over a burial ground. As you would expect with this sort of plot setup, shenanigans ensue of the haunting kind. And what Grave Secrets manages to pull off with a low budget just makes the scares that much more effective. I have no idea what I was doing watching this at my age in 92, but had I never seen it back then, well, I would never have known about it today. As a kid, I remember the father of the family character entering his garage alone during a thunderstorm. The atmosphere begins to build up as we see through the perspective of something... otherworldly. Then, without wasting any more time... Granted, anyone who knows how to superimpose and crop an image could pull off this effect today. In fact, today it just looks tacky, but through the eyes of a child, it was pretty chilling. No, seriously, amateur filmmakers, you could do this effect right now with a crappy program like Movie Studio with a green screen and some chroma keying. Then use a panning effect in your crop filter to expand the head. I'm literally doing that right now with my cartoon avatar. I think I'm having a breakdown. Okay, I stand corrected from earlier. This one that I'm about to talk about should have been my earliest memory as it premiered on television in 91, whereas Legacy of Hilltop Drive was 92. Whatever! Those years are a blur to me, and from my perspective today are basically the same year. This next one that I'm about to talk about is more about brotherhood, which is important to me because I have some of those. You know, brothers. Stephen King was no stranger to made-for-TV movies back in the 90s, and no, I'm not talking about it. This next movie I'm going to talk about is a more obscure title that you may have never heard of titled Sometimes They Come Back. But what I'm talking about is more disturbing and less spooky. Two young brothers between the ages of junior high and high school are pursued down railroad tracks into a tunnel, but they can't outrun the tunnel snakes. Tunnel snakes rule. That's us. And we rule! So the tunnel snakes grab the older brother, take his 10th doctor chucks off, and toss them up on a steel wire that just happened to be sticking out right where they are. Out of self-defense, Wayne, the older brother, clocks Butch Deloria a good one across the jaw. This prompts Butch to escalate matters by pulling out a knife, and Wayne ends up as Shish Kebab. Deserved it, man. You had that coming. No, he didn't. But you deserve this. Anyway, movie, I'll get back to you later. Well... If it isn't, my hero. Supernatural television was loved in the early 90s, and it certainly shows with this next scene I'm about to share from a short-lived series. Haunted Lives was a series on television that had that Unsolved Mysteries feel to it. In fact, I originally confused Haunted Lives with Unsolved Mysteries and couldn't find this clip for, like, forever. But thanks to the nostalgic power of YouTube, someone who happened to have the clip uploaded it in its glorious entirety. You may have heard of the Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, California, and of the story behind it with Kate Morgan. Well, that's what Haunted Lives covers during this clip. Some dude sleeping in his hotel room wakes up to the sight of bright white eyes staring at him from his television screen. 
and the eyes flash a big smile at him with pearly whites. The dude gets a bellhop to witness the face on the TV with him to make sure he isn't going insane, and they walk in on a fully formed face with eyes closed. The eyes open and look right into their souls, causing them to jolt back a little. They even unplug the TV, but that doesn't matter as the face flashes another smile. The bellhop gets the hell out of there and probably fills out his two weeks notice right after that. While it was probably predictable that I was going to talk about two Stephen King movies in this video, I'm sorry if you were hoping to learn more about things that you have never even heard of, like haunted lives or grave secrets. I sincerely apologize. The Red Man forgive you this time. No, it won't be The Stand. Or Tommy Knockers either. Stop guessing! Yes, I'm well aware that the original Stanley Kubrick The Shining is the one and only true Shining movie. Jack Nicholson was just amazing in that film and irreplaceable. True that the TV version of that movie doesn't quite hold up or compare to the theatrical release. I will argue that from a young child's perspective, however, the scene where Danny goes into room 237, which is room 217 in the book and the miniseries, to face his fear was pretty chilling. In the Jack Nicholson version, Jack kisses the naked lady and she becomes old and green. There's a lot of green in this scene. Speaking of green, Danny unveils the bathtub curtain in the TV version to reveal a naked and green zombie lady. Before we can process the words, is this a corpse? The eyes open. Holy crap, that's not a corpse. That's a naked ghost lady or something. Run, Danny, run. Oh crap, the door is locked. Why is the door always locked in situations like this? She's walking towards you, Danny, and she's singing her own version of Old MacDonald. You're a boy. You're a boy. Everywhere a boy, boy. Oh my god, Danny, get out. Get out before she molests you. Oh, thank god. Just like pictures in a book. That was... Well, crap. Hello, Danny. And now you have a little bit more insight as to why I'm a kook today. Really, I was just looking for an excuse to talk about some of these. This kook is named Luke, and thank you for watching WASD-FM. Wait!